horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, are you in the market for a brand new bicycle, a radio, a record player maybe, or a watch of your very own? Well, there's an easy way to get them at a big discount. Not only the things I mentioned, but many others besides. Just save the rainbow coupons from any of the five General Mills cereal favorites, Wheaties, Cheerios, Kicks, Sugar Jet, and Tricks, or from the Betty Crocker Pick-A-Pack. There are more than 30 different exciting premiums offered. With rainbow coupons, you can save up to 50%. For instance, the famous Timex wristwatch, boy or girl's model, retails for $7.65, federal tax included. You can get one for only four fifty and twelve rainbow coupons. To learn more about this terrific plan, look for the rainbow corner on your favorite cereal package. On each package, there's a rainbow coupon and directions for getting your copy of the rainbow coupon catalog. Get Wheaties, Cheerios, Sugar Jet, Tricks, Kicks, or the Betty Crocker Pick a Pack today. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow! Are you still there? A troop of United States cavalry had pitched temporary camp in the hills, a few miles from the small western town of Rock Ridge. In his headquarters tent, the commanding officer, Captain Milton, and Lieutenant Wiley were in conference. Lieutenant, up to now, you and the rest of the troop haven't known why we're on our way to Fort Terror. That's right, sir. A tribe of Apaches on the Chief White Fox have been showing signs of getting out of hand. Scouts report that they've been holding councils of war. And it's been reported that someone is supplying them with ammunition and rifles. And the colonel expects an attack on the fort? That's right. Well, sir, why don't we push on? We've been here since yesterday. I'll tell you why. In his dispatch, the colonel suggested we camp here near Rock Ridge until I locate a certain man who can guide us safely to the fort. Otherwise, we'd run the risk of ambush. How do you propose to locate the man you speak of, sir? The colonel explained how that was to be done. About ten miles south of here, there's a mission. I'm to send a message to the padre there. And he, in turn, will get in touch with the man I mentioned and send him here. Who is he, Captain? He's known as the Lone Ranger. Send the messenger with that note to the padre right away, Lieutenant. There's no time to lose. Yes, sir. I'll attend to it at once. A short time later, one of the troopers carrying the note to the padre left the camp and took the trail toward the mission. He had ridden several miles and was rounding a bend in the trail when... Message we took from a trooper. He isn't alive to know we got it, though. Mm, that 
thought they tried to send somebody through with a dispatch. He wasn't riding toward the fort, Buck. He was riding south. Riding south? That's funny. Give me that dispatch. Oh, yeah. Uh, here it is. Hmm. Is it important? Uh, read it out loud. And listen to this. Dear Padre, I've been advised you know the whereabouts of a masked man known as the Lone Ranger. Masked man? Shut up, Rusty. Go on, Buck. It is of the utmost importance that you get word to him at once. Please inform the Lone Ranger that we are camped a few miles south of Rock Ridge and that I anxiously await his arrival. Very true of yours, D.C. Milton, Captain Soup, G. U.S. Cavalry. Hey, that's not good, Buck. I heard about that masked man. He's one critter it's best not to tangle. I saw that Lone Ranger once. He rides a big white stallion, wears a black mask and a white hat. Yeah, uh, what about it? Just this. Among the horses they stole from the ranches in the valley, White Fox's Indians brought in a big Arabian horse, a white one. I know White Fox will let me use it. I can make a black mask, and I know where I can get a white hat. Yeah, but why do you hey, want to... Hey, I bet I get your idea. <laughs> well, if you don't, I'll tell you. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to go to the trooper's camp and pass myself off as a lone ranger. Following afternoon, Lieutenant Wiley entered the headquarters tent in a state of subdued excitement. Captain, the masked man is here. Fine, fine. Have him come right in. Yes, sir. The captain will see you now, sir. Oh, thanks, Lieutenant. How do you do, sir? I'm Captain Milton. I appreciate your quick response to my message. I came as soon as I heard from the Padre, Captain. Sit down, sit down, sir. Oh, thank you. Captain, the trooper who took the message to the Padre hasn't returned to camp. I thought perhaps he'd return with the masked man. Oh, uh... uh I can tell you about the trooper, Captain. He, uh, well, he had a slight accident. Uh, sprained his ankle, as a matter of fact. Oh, sprained his ankle? Yes, it was badly swollen. And though he wanted to return, the Padre and I suggested that he stay a day or so. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, it's all right, sir. It's all right. The trooper earned a short rest by getting you here. What is it you want, Captain? Get us through safely to Fort Terrace. Can you do it? Just put yourself in my hands, Captain. The fort is only about uh, 20 miles west of here. I know, but that low range of hills a few miles over yonder is my main worry. I've been warned to watch out for an ambush by the Indians there. There's a narrow valley through those hills that will best serve our purpose, Captain. Be ready to move at dawn. I'll ride toward the hills now and scout around a bit. Oh, and don't worry, Lieutenant. I'll make sure everything will work out just as I planned. Tonto rode into town for a few supplies. The masked man waited in a grove of cottonwoods. Before long, he heard the steady beat of hoofs that told of Tonto's return. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Did you get the supplies, Tonto? Ah. And me see some troopers in town, Kimasabi. Troopers here in Rock Ridge? Well, me find out troopers have camp in hills a few miles to the south. They must be on the way to Fort Terrett. I've heard that Indians are causing trouble out that way. That's right. Well, we might be able to help the commander of the troops. They run the danger of ambush between here and the fort. Maybe it's not safe to go to Trooper's camp. I know Colonel Harris, commanding officer of the fort. He told me that if he had to send for reinforcements, he wanted us to guide them through the hills. The colonel said he'd mention us in his dispatches so we could safely approach the army camp. Oh, when you go to see Troop Commander. The right of the camp at dawn, Tonto. Here's over. Right now, we'll go pitch camp nearby, then turn in early for a good rest. Easy, sir. But you look out easy, fella. Oh, sir. Not the camp. Darkness had fallen when Rusty and Moore hurriedly rode to Buck Carey's hideout. Oh, oh, oh. in the valley to find out, thought something happened. What? We come on a couple of other critters watching the Redskins move in there. What's that? That's right, Buck. There were a couple of scouts from the fort. We jumped them and made sure one of them won't talk. We shot the other in the arm, but he got away. You clumsy fools. Why didn't you go after him? We did, but his horse was too fast. 
He rode toward the army camp. He'll warn the captain about the Indians waiting in the valley. He'll know I was trying to trick him. Uh, I won't dare go back in the morning. Well, there's only one other way for the troops to take, Buck. They won't take a chance on the valley now. What are you driving at? It isn't too late yet to have White Fox move his Indians from the valley. So as to ambush the troops on the other trail. A short time later, Lieutenant Wiley entered the captain's tent. Captain Milton. What is it, Lieutenant? A wounded scout from the fort has just arrived, sir. He's right outside. Wants to see you immediately. Well, have him come in. Yes, sir. The captain will see you come right in. Yes, sir. Well, speak up, man. What is it? Scout Hawkins from Fort Ted reporting, sir. Go on. Two of us came through the narrow valley in the hills yonder, sir, at dusk. We saw Indians filling into the valley on each side. Are you sure? Yes, sir. While we were watching, we were attacked. Jackson was killed. I was hit in my arm, but I managed to get through to your camp. They're getting ready for an ambush, sir. I'm sure of it. Captain, the man who was here this afternoon as short as... I know, Lieutenant, I know. That when our so-called friend, the Lone Ranger, returns at dawn, he's to be placed under arrest immediately. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When Bill's that fast, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now, to continue, as the first flush of dawn spread over the hills, the Lone Ranger and Toto were in the saddle, riding toward the army camp to offer their help. As they drew near, the masked man signaled a halt. <laughs> Hello, Otto, I'll ride on from here alone. Uh -huh. Adios. 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 Not knowing that because of Buck Carey's deception, the camp had been alerted for his arrest, the Lone Ranger rode openly along the trail leading to the camp. He drew rein at the guard's shop order. Uh -huh. Oh, oh. Step out, advance to be recognized. Very well. He's a steady big foot. I'm a friend of Colonel Harris. I've come to see your commanding officer. I'll explain my mask to him. The captain gave special orders about you. You're under arrest. Is that so? Good work, Sentry. I saw him approaching. Keep him covered while I take his gun. Well, just a minute, Lieutenant. You take me to You did all the talking you're going to, mister. You said enough yesterday. We found out you were planning to lead us into an ambush. Yesterday? I don't understand. Maybe you don't, but we do. Captain has ordered your arrest for treason. Now, I'll take those guns. Sorry, hey, Lieutenant. Look out, Lieutenant. Let me go. I've got a gun at your back. Tell your guard to drop his rifle. You won't get away with this. A few minutes old. All right, me. guard. I give you ten seconds. Throw that rifle in the bushes. Otherwise, no, I'll no. be... Uh, i better do it. You'll kill you, Lieutenant. Now, I'll toss your gun away, Lieutenant. You'll hang for this. Not if I can help it. Lie down, both of you. Good. Here, Silver. Meet again, Lieutenant. Adios. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come through there. Come on, the guard. Come on, the guard. Toto had heard the commotion in the camp, and he was already mounted and waiting to join the Lone Ranger in this fast flight. The two headed into the hills west of the camp and rode hard until they were sure they were safe. They had reached the hillside at the entrance to the Nell Valley when they reined to a halt. Oh, 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 oh,
What happened, Kimasabi? They tried to place me under arrest, Hutto, for treason. Treason? Me not savvy. Neither do I. But from the little that was said, I have an idea that someone has been to the camp, posing as me. Someone who planned to lead the troop into ambush. Um, that's not good. Hutto, I'm beginning to notice something. What kind? Certain kinds here on this slope. Look around a bit. Uh, me see them. Look like plenty Indian move along here. Signs, plenty fresh. Otto, I'm sure the Indians were hiding on the slopes of this narrow valley, waiting to ambush the troopers. Ah. They found out the troopers learned of the ambush, so the Indians left here sometime before dawn. If troopers think Indians still here, them not come through valley on way to fort. That's right. The Indians may figure the same way and plan to ambush the troops somewhere else. We'll scout around and find out which way they went when they left the valley. Easy, steady, be caught. Easy, easy, easy. Hold on, sir. The valley trail curved gradually northward until a few miles beyond the place where the ambush had been planned, it joined the upper trail. The masked man and Toto finally reached the point where the trails joined and rode on for a short distance before halting. You see where trail reached river just ahead. Looks like Indians cross the river. They can't go far beyond the other side without running into scouts from the fort. We'll turn off to the left of that small wooded bluff just ahead. Oh. There, Cottonwood Grove, just beyond the other bank. Yes, but once across the river, the cavalry would give it a wide berth. I think there's an Indian chief on his pony. He just rode to the edge of the grove. There's a horseman riding in from the other direction. Him seem to... He must have a... Other fellow wear mask. Ride white horse like you. Oh, let me see. You must be the one who impersonated me. That's right. Now they're pointing toward the river. How do I think I know their plan? And what's that? The river is wide at that point and stirred deep. The Indians wait until the troopers are fording that river. They can rush out and massacre them. That's right. There's no time to lose. Ride downstream, cross over, and ride to Fort Terrace. When I thought of a plan. Ask the turtle to wait beyond where the Indians are hiding until he hears a bugle. All right, get going, Colonel. Hurry. Get him up. Get him up. Get Meantime, Captain Milton, with Lieutenant Wiley and the wounded scout, rode at the head of his cavalry troop along the upper trail. Hawkins, I hope I'm right in following your advice to use the upper trail. Don't worry, sir. This upper trail runs through open country all the way to the river. Once across that, we'll have no worries. Well, I'll have to take your word for it. Get up there. Hey, somebody riding down the trail. Coming fast. Maybe another scout from the port, sir. I, I... Look, Captain, it's the masked man. Well, I'll be... I'll pick him right out of the saddle. I'll have oh, him. Oh, wait, Lieutenant. We we'll have our guns trained on him. I thunder what nerve the man has. Oh, no. Oh, easy. Easy. Take him prison, Lieutenant. Don't let him get away. This oh, wait a minute, Captain. I have a letter of identification in my pocket, Captain. It's signed with the Colonel. Let me see it. Why, of course. Hmm. Well, this does identify you as a... I heard you carried silver bullets, and I see them in your gun belt. The man we saw yesterday carried ordinary bullets. The Indians are in a grove just beyond the riverbank on the other side. They plan to massacre your troop midstream. So that's it. Captain, if you'll trust me, I think we can route White Fox's brave and the crooks who work with them. All right, I will trust you now. What's your plan, sir? We'll uh, leave the trail just ahead and ride north again. <laughs> about this, Rusty. I felt sure the troopers had reached the river before now. Yeah, but I don't... Hey, did you hear that? Hey, what? The troopers! They're coming down along the river bank on this side. They must have been tipped off, but we have enough Indians to hold them off. Yeah, another bugle. They came from west of here toward the fort. Look, coming over the hill back of us. The soldiers from Fort Terrace. The Indians will be trapped. Come on, get the horses quick. Make for the river. As the troopers moved in from each side, they gradually spread out so that the Indians had no chance to escape. The battle waxed fierce and hot, and the great figure of the Lone Ranger could be seen in the thickest part of the fray. As the masked man helped fight back the furious onslaught of the frenzied Indians, he caught sight of Buck Terry making a break for the river. 
The Lone Ranger moved out of the fight and rode after the fleeing figure. Oh, please! The mighty silver responded to the urgent cry of his master and steadily closed the gap between the Lone Ranger and Buck. Many of the fighting troopers and Indians gaped in open wonder as they saw what seemed to be two identical masked men on white horses racing toward the river. A typical of faster! Buck glanced back and seeing the masked man behind him frantically caught for his gun, which slipped from his shaking fingers and fell to the ground. He wondered why the Lone Ranger didn't shoot. A moment later, he found out when the great silver pulled alongside. Get off the horse! With a mighty leap, the Lone Ranger dragged Buck from the saddle. <laughs> on your feet! Oh, will you? The Lone Ranger and Buck exchanged heavy blows, and for the moment seemed well matched. Soon Buck's expression changed to one of wonder, then fear, as the Lone Ranger rained hammer-like blows that rocked the outlaw on his heels. This is for what you try to do to the troopers. Oh, you oh that's so Take it. The big outlaw took first one blow, then another to the jaw. Forceful blows that were more than any man could stand. And with a groan, he fell to the earth. All right, you're through. won the battle, thanks to you. Captain, there's your imposter. I'll take off his mask. Buck Carey, I might have known. You know him? A hunted outlaw, Captain. Wanted for selling firearms to the Indians, as well as helping them plan attacks on settlers. We caught the other two as they started to follow this man. Good. Colonel Harris should recommend that you receive a medal for what you've done, sir. I have no use for medals, Captain. Thanks, just the oh, same. Oh, 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 boy. See, uh... I want to apologize to you. It's not I... necessary, Lieutenant. Otto and I are glad we were able to help. I hope we meet again sometime. All right, Otto, we'll leave now. You uh, let me close this, Adios. Adios. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Lieutenant, there goes a loyal American who will be remembered long after the rest of us are gone and forgotten. They'll never forget the Lone Ranger. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.